Hey guys, this is Austin. Now is the time to build a gaming PC. And 2018 has been a great year for gaming. However, I think things are about to get worse. Much worse. So beside me here, I have two of my budget builds from last year. One $300 system as well as a $550 system. Today though, let me show you exactly why now is such a good time to build a PC by replacing some of our 2018 builds for some stuff which is much, much better. All right, so today I'm going to be building two gaming PCs, or well, more specifically, one and a half. So there won't be any fancy camera angles because I'm by myself. I miss Ken. So with third gen Ryzen around, I mean, there's a huge amount of value in the high end, but interestingly, a lot of that has actually trickled down to low end. Now, not necessarily because you should buy a third gen Ryzen system at, you know, five, $600, but instead it's pushed the last generation of Ryzen way down. So as you'll see in a second here, we're taking advantage of second gen Ryzen 5, which is only $130 right now. Seriously, this is a six core processor. 12 threads, overclockable, and it's 130 bucks. I mean, not that long ago, you would have had to pay five, $600 easily to get this kind of performance. Now it's in my, uh, my $500 budget build. But something that I think a lot of people are overlooking is the fact the memory prices, as well as things such as SSDs, graphics cards, a lot of stuff has actually come down a lot since last year. I mean, if you're looking at something like 16 gigs of RAM, it's nearly half the price it was this time last year. SSDs have come even farther. So it feels like it was not that long ago that you were looking at three, four, five hundred dollars for a 120 gig SSD, whereas now you can pick up one for twenty dollars. I've got a 240 gig BX500 here which was $31, $31 for a 240 gig SSD. Like, what are you doing, man? Like, it absolutely makes so much sense right now. And then of course, there are the graphics to talk about. So this year we've seen pretty major launches from both AMD as well as Nvidia, but what I really care about is the actual budget side. So this has actually really driven a lot of prices down. So take this RX 570, for example. Now this is a couple year old card, However, for only about $120, it is absolutely incredible bang for the buck. In fact, we did an entire video rounding up budget GPUs, and this is my ultimate favorite. You just can't beat this price to performance. Not only are memory prices likely to go up soon because there is a huge oversupply in the market right now, which is a big reason why we've seen such cheap prices, but there's also the looming threat of tariffs, especially here in the US, which could very easily drive up the price of pretty much everything on the table right now. I mean, yeah, sure, things generally do get better over time, but they also tend to get more expensive. And this is historically an incredibly good time to build a game PC, just because so many components are so good and especially so cheap. All right, so the first system is all prepped and ready to go. In fact, let me give you a little bit of a closer look. So one of the nice parts about this is that for just under $600, you're getting a lot of bang for the buck. You've got the six core Ryzen processor, 16 gigs of RAM, you've got the 500 gig NVMe drive, we have our RX 570. Now at 570 bucks, this is pretty much in the realm of what most people would consider a budget gaming PC. However, we can go cheaper and we most certainly will. So one of our most popular videos last year was on this, the $300 gaming build, which was surprisingly solid, especially given that small budget. However, today, well today we can do just a little bit better. Okay, so I have my systems done. It's been a couple days. However, we now have our new budget $300 build as well as our $570 system. So last time I built this one, you guys are fairly familiar, but this one, this one's actually pretty cool. So inside, we're taking advantage of Ryzen 3 2200G. It's a little bit older, however, at only $80 for an unlocked quad-core processor with pretty decent integrated graphics, this is a killer deal. So this entire system with eight gigs of RAM, we've got a 256 gig SSD around back, we've got a 430 watt power supply, everything here, is just under $300. I think last I checked, it was like 285 on Amazon. Just don't mind the uh, lack of IO shield. I, uh, I lost it. Oh, so while Ken was moving this PC the other day, he dropped it, <clears throat> dropped it. And so now the front panel is uh, very slightly loose. Don't make something that looks like a handle. <laughs> That actually does come off a little too easy, doesn't it? Surprising exactly no one, the new systems are a lot faster. So when it comes to CPU, while the new budget build is a decent step up, it is absolutely nothing compared to the new $570 system, which completely wipes the floor with all of these systems thanks to Ryzen 5 2600. Now even bigger of a jump is going to the graphics side, where yes, the budget build again is a little bit faster, but because we now have the budget for a pretty decent dedicated graphics card, the budget boy, well, it's a, uh, 
It's budget no longer. Benchmarks are one thing though, but the real test is how do these PCs actually gain? Well, to start out with, we have CSGO on the $300 system. I did hit it, it's fine, don't worry about it. With maxed out settings at 1080p, we're at 45, 50 frames per second. So I might wanna turn the settings down just a little bit. This is very playable though, literally just by turning the anti-aliasing down a little bit, we're at 75, 80 frames per second. And we can easily, if I just crank things down a little bit more, get up to something like 100, 120 FPS. But realistically with a $300 system, 75 FPS is probably going to be just fine. To the surprise of exactly no one, what, what, why can't I shoot? Are you serious right now? No. No! Well, I was gonna say performance is better, except shooting is being, is nice. <laughs> How did I do that? Okay, so uh, after fixing my control settings, this is a, well, it's a much better experience. So right now we're at 200 frames per second, and this is with fully maxed out 1080p, got anti-aliasing on, literally everything. This is a more expensive system, but considering that we're only paying about twice as much, you're getting three, four times the graphics performance. We've got more RAM, we've got literally everything. Oh wait, why am I playing with a keyboard? Uh, okay, so <laughs> next we have Rocket League. I forgot to plug in a, a controller. I'll be right back. Uh, <laughs> I need a controller. <laughs> I literally made like half a second into the video. I was like, oh wait. No, this is bad. So next we have Rocket League. Again, we're playing at 1080p, but this time we are playing on quality settings. However, 60 frames per second is not too bad. I mean, for a $300 system, I am legitimately impressed. Okay, yeah, this is, uh, this is significantly better. We're literally capped at 250 frames per second. And meanwhile, we're also having the actual settings pretty much all the way set up to quality. Yeah, there's no contest here. I mean, it's a more powerful system. But when you jump up to having that RX 570, it's not the most powerful graphics card in the world, but you're still getting completely solid performance at 1080p, especially in more esports titles like this. Next up, we have everyone's favorite, Fortnite, which actually should be pretty playable even on the $300 budget system. So we do have to turn the settings down a little bit here. So right now I'm running at 720p on medium. However, we're fairly close to a 60 FPS lock. Well, frame rate's great. Uh, not having a gun, not great. Yeah, no, this is totally playable. And in fact, I actually could probably turn the resolution up just a little bit, because right now I'm actually averaging around 75, 80 frames per second. Dude, this system is totally solid for 1080. So Fortnite just immediately jumping in, we're in the 70 frame per second range, and this is with full epic settings at 1080p. I know we already went over the 570 in our budget GPU video, but this is a lot of card for 1080p gaming. I mean, the fact that we're able to get 60-ish FPS in pretty much anything we play, even with maxed out settings, is a really nice feature. Give me, some, oh no, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, I'm running, I'm running, 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 nope, nope, go, okay. All right, well, that that's unfortunate. Wait, what? Go, 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 go. Get it, get it. Get what? Get. Oh, no. There was nothing there. He was just shooting me. No, I mean, yeah. We at some point need just a montage of me sucking in Fortnite. No, why? Oh, oh, no, no, you don't, no, you don't. Because I got shot in the back. Kind of speaks for itself, I guess. I really do think that now is a great time to build a PC. So if you look at the budget end at the $300 option, you're actually getting a pretty decent level of performance. So it can play a lot of games at least reasonably well. And importantly, it is actually fairly easy to not only build, but you also can do some upgrades later on down the line. Great for a first system. However, if you've got a little bit more money to spend, I do think the mid-range option is well worth it. I mean, you're getting a lot here, right? Six core processor, 16 gigs of RAM, a decent graphics card, five 12 gig SSD or 500 gig SSD. I mean, there's a lot going for this and for the bang for the buck, I mean, it's hard to beat. But regardless, if you're considering buying or building a new gaming PC, I really do think now is a good time. Especially once prices start to creep up, we'll look back on uh, late 2019 and think, ah, right back when you could get a system with super cheap RAM and a budget CPU and not like, oh no, I've missed the days of $35 RAM. 